What's good YouTube and welcome to the house. I just want to shout out before we get into the in-depth market discussion that YBM has their Black Friday sale going on until the end of today and by far this is one of the best prices you will see for ghosts from the past. A lot of people are speculating this is a good one to hold on to or keep looking at March reprint sets and especially with those five different ghost rares and I want to break this down. So $467 is what they're selling it to people shipped and these are kind of bulky packs as we know it so when you're a vendor and you're paying on say $30 MSRP a product usually it's around 16.5 we know that these are $15 packs instead of 30 so we're going to multiply by 25 instead of 30 here this is about what a vendor would be paying on this and they're only asking for 467 as a way to give back to the community so they're barely making anything on top of what they're selling with that bulky shipping to your front door they also have some of the cheapest cases of blazing vortex still up at 628 dollars the question is will those tcg exclusives pan out that's a gamble i personally wouldn't be taking and i would be looking more at this set that being said let's get into the discussion starting with a little interesting card so many people lately are getting into Yu-Gi-Oh that don't even know Yu-Gi-Oh. They remember it a bit from their childhood. They like it and they see all the money that is getting pumped into Pokemon and they're looking at other card games. This is something that's really happening. And I constantly get the question, is there a cheap undervalued collector card that I should be buying, John. And the reason why I don't push them on Market Watch is something that's very real called influencer hype. And I think Rogue Duelist Trade covers this a lot. And if I give heavy pushes towards something instead of a slow roll or people deciding to take their times to get theirs, they disappear. So I'm going to feature a card that I think is underpriced but doesn't really necessarily matter and has a ton of other awesome copies that you could go ahead and get over time. But you may notice the name Retro Pack 2 here, a name that sells itself, something that carries. And Green Baboon here is very cheap for what it is. So this is the kind of card I would go after. But how I would not go after it is I wouldn't just throw my money at the screen and buy them all expecting amazing sales rates and that sort of thing. How I personally personally would go after a card like this if I have the chance if I use my own big brain theory and I'm in the market see something like this I would slowly buy copies I might buy out one vendor or two but I wouldn't price spike it and then I would wait for it to cool down and do that again see now you have copies on hand and when a buyout actually happens on the card what does that mean you can be the first lister back with decent quantities on the market. In fact, you can also list a couple of copies at, say, around $2 since this is a 50 cent card, right? And then once a buyout's happening, you'll actually be alerted from your own account making sales and then be able to relist. That's how I like to approach something instead of, oh yeah, I'm going to get them all and make so much money. What do you realistically think the sales rate on Green Baboon post buyout would be? Not the best, but this 50 cent card very well could be $5 down the road. Let's take a look at alternate versions. Here is the Shonen Jump Magazine promo version. Jump promos themselves have their own collectability and are often considered the highest variant of it, despite the mass copies that ended up out there. But then again, a lot of those ended up damaged. $20 lowest versus a market price. You could get this for $6 not too, too long ago. And then you have a Retro Pack 2 blister. The American version comes with green baboon what does that go for sealed ah three hundred dollars and what keeps happening as these sealed products skyrocket such as collector tins with promos that aren't even that constant oh they go up in price over time so when i look through the name retro pack 2 baboon as a secret rare promo does not hit the front page you also have gores as another promo available a different way that is spiking up in price really hard and very memorable to Yu Gi Oh. now Baboon is memorable to Yu-Gi-Oh! That's why I like a card like this. But I like to raise a channel that thinks for themselves, that takes the information I apply and doesn't just go, give me handout, John. Give me card name and I go by. Give me easy. You see, the problem with that is you'll spend a ton of your money, all of them disappear, and then everybody undercuts on trying to get it back out and then there's no sales rates unless people double down 
triple down, quadruple down, and do buyout after buyout after buyout on a card. And I'll give a really good example of a card like that in a bit. I also think the Dark Legends version for a little bit more is the better buy, although this name is definitely kind of mystified slash underappreciated, I think, in the US market. I do think, despite it being a lower rarity in an ultra version where you have a jump ultra as well, at a dollar to two dollars, these would probably disappear pretty fast. And you can see Toy was here doing pretty much what I said, listed a bit higher. You can tell when the buyout might be happening. So I like the retro pack version for this. You can get high, high quantities of a promo in a $300 sealed product for, oh, so cheap. And there's so many of them, 23 here from Core TCG and all those. That's why I like it. You could buy these out to the point of even a dollar and then sit and then wait for them to go back down instead of forcing it all the way. Instead of buying out these $5 copies, $6 copies, $7 copies, you don't have to do that lifting. That's why I like this approach. Another thing I like to do as well, and it's not exactly the best approach towards a market, but it's a very safe approach. Once something spikes, I like to sell to the point of break even and then decide, do I want to keep longer or do I want to cash out? How do I want to approach this? When I'm sitting on a stack of cards that I call free rolling, when I made all of my money back and I now have a stack of cards, I really enjoy that position. Really greed favors the bold though in the situation where, oh, I'm going to hold all of them till they're higher. Oh, this is still undervalued. Sometimes that makes people way, way, way more money. Other times the people who moved and sold them all make way more money and something never recovers. So there's two ways that I really like to approach selling after things fall out. But that's why I don't really like featuring these kinds of cards necessarily on my channel. I do have a push and pull with my audience where trust is built. And if if I say something, this is good, here's why, and I present reasoning, and a ton of people agree with that, they'll disappear, and it will spike the market somewhat artificially, and then it will cool off, and a lot of people might be stuck with cards that don't get a good sales rate, because it didn't happen at a natural progression or rate, or people triple and quadruple down into the card that people do make money, and then it goes to a ridiculous kind of fashion. I covered the blue eyes in an in-depth theory not too long ago for the retro pack. Check this out. On TCG Player, a normal market price of 53 That means it's making sales, because a lot of people only know to look at TCG Player, and don't consider looking at both as I have preached for years here on Market Watch. When we look over at eBay, wow, near mints at 26. What a steal. Well, people are really parting with their money around these prices. Then, then we see my sponsor, Yu-Gi-Oh! Black Market, not to blow up their spot after shouting them out. I'm getting, they have this at $40. Well, uh, over on eBay, I see a couple of cheaper, very near mint. Ah, near mint, $8 for Italian. It still hasn't changed after all this time, except a bit of a double up, which is which is nice. I showed this back off all the way, I, I believe in, uh, yeah, May 25th. So not too long ago, about half a year has passed. And I, I want to actually have, let you guys have a listen to what I said then about this card and why I do think it was an okay buy, an okay thing to get for a piece of history but also what might happen and with it more general discussion so i want to actually focus this buyout in multiple and let's, places we'll, we'll speed it up a little bit and that's blue eyes ultimate dragon retro pack one this is a promo and you will see actually italian here available at five dollars and weird the next five dollars still on tcg player note is this is after an english buyout though. ten dollars and then they just disappear you see somebody trying to get 77 on a light play no, print, notice that on a buyout play, italian waiting for the full they buyout, left and the other versions dollars on an unlim of course it's unlim it can't come first it's a promo for a near mint now I've had actual confirmation that when people were doing this buyout, one of my friends had them listed at $99, and they sold to multiple different people. It wasn't just one person. Somebody tried to make them all so go. So this is something that people are really trying to dig into and make happen, yet you have a comparable on market, that $4 Italian and $4 over here. Weird. In the Pokemon community, they used to consider, like, base set four and first pretty much- So I'm talking about before even the further blow up that happened in Pokemon. So high, eventually it just went up and up and up, and even though the comparable is still, like, 10x versus it, 
that increase in the foreign price was very impressive as well so while people are treating the foreigns like dirt they're leaving them on market there are a ton of them that exist i think if the comparable stays up towards 90 100 which fallout will probably mean that it wants to i told there, people, people there's fat stacks of these, these all the now, way out to 100 they're going to be part of the difference is blue eyes ultimate the dragon is an icon where baboon isn't necessarily as well by the way this will fall flat on its retro pack one is also nicer than going two. up very very well and we've, some as we've seen this was 200 and actually trying to stick there and people have rushed after other ones like when i showed the summon schools were 26 10 promos Those have been, getting and like other revolving buyouts all year pretty long. much everywhere even the jump promo so this is just the newest focus promo it is very iconic to the show classic dm and let's compare it to fallout of not so classic but newer things number 101 silent honor arc this was a funny go, buyout but number hunting's gotten very very, very serious rares falling out oh so much cheaper than 100 28 dollars 28 dollars 28 dollars people just lining up to sell them whenever you go on an initial buyout even if it has the name retro pack one behind it this is a promo you're going to have people that were waiting that didn't want to sell this eight dollars ten dollars twelve dollars that just kept and kept and they're gonna be okay i wanted 30 time to list and you're gonna to have to buy out those and then you're gonna to have to buy out the next ones to have a successful long-term buyout that's why you see whenever we list oh my gosh i have a hundred dollar card no not quite yet there's something called fallout and it happens with pretty much everything remember when number 107 first editions were 120 plus now i'm reacting to myself i'm allowed to be price a available quiet. on market there's not the most available but there's people that were like all right i was waiting for this i'm gonna go ahead and list here not all the way up i don't want to just undercut and never sell and get a sales rate i'm gonna force you to go ahead and buy these out too if you want to continue to try to get above that hundred dollar price so those people with those pockets they're even not with how crazy Yu -Gi has gotten them at the prices they wanted these points they stand attempt, and they're not going to continue but i thought it was very interesting to note versus the pokemon market that you do have these very very cheap comparables here that you can use my tcg player link in the description down below it's costing you nothing <laughs> <to support people laughs> shout out you'd already be buying to perhaps go in on or stay away from what do you i wonder how that sounds in 2x speed one of its, you know targeted focused buyouts along with the other promos do you think the international market will continue to keep it cheap cheap or do you think people will eat these up and this will start to go I, I like to leave questions so that you learn to think for yourself and see from examples and with the retro pack i knew it would probably continue to get sales but the fact that uh this blue eye specifically english copies got sales in the hundred dollar range meant somebody would be hungry to keep it up so whenever it fell under a certain point they likely would continue to pour money back in yet still they are cheaper than that initial push and force but they still might be eating pretty well for the ones they bought at 20s and 30s and 40s overall so they're they're able to continue some force on it but you see almost this mysticism of tcg player versus ebay and just not looking around the corner for these copies that are still half the freaking price from people that got fat stacks of them back in the day for three dollars four dollars that's why with baboon well you buy out one version you buy out another version you finally buy out the retro pack version if you were to push your money in that direction it could be poorly spent your sales rates could be gosh awful you could not make money off of it and there could be people that just relist that already have them in hand and undercut you so all i say this is a card that's 50 cents that could be easily five dollars and actually sell how's it actually going to sell versus if a lot of people bought this to resell it how will it actually fare later do i think it's undervalued yes do i think you should just rush at it probably not but by featuring it that's likely going to happen with this card that's why with penny stonks i try to show more meta relevant stuff that isn't just going to spike because of my video usually it's newer there's a lot on the market there's ones that you all can like consider and take your time with rather than just headlong diving in because you're scared of missing a deal another example here this card was three dollars forever you see an actual market price of 14 so we know there's some sales every single time i featured this it's cheaper once again because they're despite the iconicness of cyber in dragon versus jaden this card last time we looked a couple of weeks ago 1850 now 16 there's just not sales rates people keep undercutting each other and while one or two do happen and over on ebay it's actually far more expensive around that corner this card vendors have fat stacks of them from back in the day and sometimes they don't even move at this oh i'll wait till it's 25 on tc oh i'll wait till it's 30 and you have this lineup now that will stop another buyout from ever happening because look at all the 35 50 the the ones you have to get through from the fallout from vendors that just aren't going to pull their listings
Do consider that whenever you're pumping your money into cards. Do consider that whenever I'm also saying, like, I get I get people that are angry. They're like, oh, you're not going to tell me your tricks and tips. I stopped vending specifically because I didn't want that weight on me of taking a deal from my audience before offering it to them. I like having that direct connection with you guys, having no incentive to go, you know what? I'm going to get this till it's a dollar for myself, then bring it to you guys. And then you guys make the buy. And now I naturally already have the copies and now it's up. That's why I took myself out of the content. I don't think it's bad also for people who have responsibilities and vending to do market watches. I think not being rusty and staying on top of things and actually vending will tell you sales rates and data that are good to know. I personally just don't want to be in that position. I want to always put you guys first so that you guys always use that TCG player link in the description down below costing you nothing extra to support the channel directly for the cards you'd already be buying when buying them but i do think this is an important conversation to have how youtubers self-included self-aware do influence the markets at times and what can happen from that and yeah i still do have ideas of cards that i think are very low in price collectability wise etc versus the products that they're in and can make arguments for them but i also want you to realize the re realistic outfall the realism of, well, these cards are worth this, but they're not moving. Why? And that sort of thing that goes with it. As a lot of content creators right now are getting into, this card is $5,000! PSA 10 first off, good luck getting there. And second off, good luck selling it as well.